Now I'm going to move this magnet close to the coil and watch how there's going to be a positive reading on the ammeter. Okay, this is because of Faraday's law. Now watch what happens when I move the magnet away. Hopefully you can see there's a negative reading on the ammeter. This can be explained using Lenz's law. Lenz's law states that the direction of the induced EMF and therefore the current is always such as to oppose the change that induced it. In other words, the current flows to oppose a change in flux. So if there's an increase in flux, it's going to try to oppose the increase in flux. If there's a decrease in flux, it's going to try to oppose the decrease in flux. Okay, so here's Faraday's law. But what Lenz's law does is it adds a negative in front of it, like here. So that's because of Lenz's law. To understand what's going on, think of the coil as being a person who doesn't like change. Okay, so think of the coil. Right now it's happy because there's no increase or decrease in flux. But watch what happens when I move the magnet closer. There's going to be an increase in flux acting towards the right. So the coil doesn't like this. So the coil induces its own EMF. Okay, and according to Lenz's law, the EMF and the current that's produced flows in a direction which produces its own magnetic field which opposes the change. The key idea here is the direction of the current is going to try to oppose the increase in flux. So let's say the current flows around like this. It produces its own magnetic field which is actually as you can see is acting towards the left. Okay, We're trying to minimize that increase in flux. Uh, and also on top of that there's going to be a force between the coil and the magnet and that's going to keep them apart. It's going to try to keep them apart. It's going to repel them. So two equal and opposite forces uh, acting like so. After a while, it's going to get used to this. Okay, so because um, you know it's not changing, if you keep it there for a while, the magnetic field is going through it, but it's not changing. So when there's no change in flux, even though there is a flux, there's no change in it. There's going to be no EMF induced, so there's nothing flowing uh, around the coil. And now watch what happens when I move the magnet away. The coil doesn't like the decrease in flux, so it's going to induce an EMF again. But this time, it's going to be in the opposite direction. Okay, so the current is going to flow in the opposite direction and it's going to produce a magnetic field in the opposite direction to before earlier on uh, and it's going to try to oppose the decrease in flux now. So before it was trying to oppose the increase in flux but then it got used to it, now it's trying to oppose the decrease in flux. It just doesn't like change. Okay, so the current flows around like this now, so it's the opposite direction before it was flowing and the magnetic field produced also in the opposite direction. In this case it's towards the right because it's trying to recreate the magnetic field that is currently decreasing. Okay. Also, on top of this, there's going to be a force. Now the force is going to be attracted. It's going to try to pull them together to minimize the decrease in flux. In this example, the diagram shows a metal called Q, which is attached to an ammeter. Below Q is another set of coils, R, which is connected to a power supply. The position of both coils is fixed. The graph shows the ammeter reading when the switch is closed at T1 and opened again at T2. Explain the shape of the graph. Okay, let's see what happens at T1 when we close the switch like this. There's going to be a current flowing in coil R and that's going to produce a magnetic field around it. That magnetic field is going to go through coil Q creating a change in flux. Okay, because there's a change in flux there's going to be an EMF induced in coil Q and that's how we get a current flowing in it. So that's just Faraday's law. Okay, so an EMF is induced due to an increase in magnetic flux and you can explain that using Faraday's or a rate of change of flux produced in EMF. Okay, after a while, coil Q gets used to that flux. Okay, so it becomes zero because once the magnetic field is going through coil Q uh, and it's not changing, it's, it, there is no more EMF induced. Okay, but then at T2, we open the switch again. Now the magnetic field disappears. Okay, now there's a decrease in flux. Okay, so that's where Lenz's law comes in. So because there's a decrease in flux, the EMF induced and the current is going to be in the opposite direction, which is going to try to oppose the decrease in flux. Okay, so that's where Lenz's law comes in so to show that it's in the opposite direction. Okay, there's going to be a force between coil Q and R, initially pushing them apart when there was an increase in flux, but then it goes to zero when there's no change in flux. And then when there's a decrease in flux, it's going to try to pull them together. But because they're fixed, they won't move. 